G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are bringing back power rankings for the first time in season 2024. This used to be something I would do you know, every five rounds, sometimes every three rounds. And you know, part of me was thinking, is it a little bit early for a power rankings? And then another part of me realized, actually it's probably a really good time to try and do a power rankings in a time where we've got early season buys, where we've got a number of different teams who have played different games. Coming up with the power rankings is, is sort of almost like trying to formulate a real ranking or a, not a real ladder as such, but trying to organize, you know, which teams are doing well right now, which teams are not, and also waiting in, you know, last year's performances as well. So that's the important thing to try and clarify with this power ranking is that power rankings themselves are a little bit arbitrary. There's no clear definition for what it means. Is it a form ranking? If it was purely a form ranking, it almost kind of could just be a reflection of the current ladder anyway. What I'm trying to do here is try and rank them based on, of course, how well they've played so far, but factoring in, you know, difficulty of opponents, trying to allow for some injuries in some cases as well, where they've played their games and also, you know, factoring in how good they were at the end of last year as well, because we're early enough in the season where we still have to factor in, you know, how good was this team last year? So for instance, Collingwood is by far the hardest team to possibly rank in a power rankings. I actually think it is an impossible task. I've obviously found a spot for them in my rankings and I think I've got some okay justification for it, but I'll let you make up your mind. So I will give you my ranked 18. You can let me know in the comments as we go what you think of it. But before I do, I want to make sure you guys are looking after yourselves and that is why... This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face -face interaction. And in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're gonna be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you'll match with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to BetterHelp com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help. All right, let's crack in. Okay, let's start from the bottom of the ladder. That's usually how I like to do these things. Who is the worst team in the competition right now? I think we're all thinking the same thing and it's going to be North Melbourne. Ah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Relax, relax. I hope you haven't clicked off the video already. You know, undislike the video. I'm joking, I'm joking. The lowest ranked team in the competition in power rankings is the West Coast Eagles. But I'll show you my entire bottom four, okay? So I've got Hawthorne in 17th. I've got North Melbourne up into 16th. And I've got Richmond in 15th. So let's uh, let's discuss this block of teams. So with West Coast, again, it's hard to track improvement, but there's no doubt we haven't really seen much. Obviously, you feel like, you know, in the middle of last year, had, had the Eagles played these opponents, Port Adelaide in Adelaide, GWS in Perth, with the form they were in last year, I think those results could have been worse. But at the same time, we haven't really seen meaningful improvement. And when you factor in that North Melbourne have probably demonstrated a little bit this year, it's clearly West Coast. Hawthorne is the team I have second last now. Now, they've lost to Essendon, they've lost to Melbourne by the time I record this, and in particular against Melbourne, they look, you know, a fair way off the pace, as you'd expect. Also dealing with injuries, sure, but I don't think they've been as good as North Melbourne, who I have slightly ahead, but I can't put North Melbourne too much higher because they are still winless at the end of the day. So the bottom three teams are the same as last year's ladder. I've got West Coast obviously still 18th, Hawthorne just below North Melbourne. Yes, there's injuries. I also just don't think they've played too well. Whereas North Melbourne, by comparison, you know, they got at least five goals up against Fremantle and I think held their own to some extent against GWS. I think GWS are a very, very good side and still winless. But again, I think just slightly higher than Hawthorne. But again, it's a long season. Then I've got Richmond rounding out the bottom four. Um, is this harsh? Potentially, but I, I think you, you look back on the teams who I've got ahead and um, hopefully it will make more sense. But they are 0-3 as it currently sits. They've lost to the Gold Coast Suns. They've lost to Carlton. They've lost to Port Adelaide. So some tough opponents there. Um, two of those games at the MCG. I think they've actually been pretty good. I think they're clearly, you know, uh, clearly higher than North Melbourne, Hawthorne, and West Coast. Also, when you factor in 
a little bit of last year's form. So if Richmond start ranked higher than North Melbourne, North haven't done enough to leapfrog them by any stretch. And I think Richmond has coped really well with their injuries, but nonetheless, they're still winless and therefore I can't have them too much higher. But things can change. I've, I've been quietly impressed with Richmond whilst also pessimistic about how this year might go for them. So that's one block of teams I want to discuss. And then we've got from 10th to 14th, this is a block of teams that uh, sort of, at least in my mind, were kind of a little bit hard to sh- to separate, you know, in preseason predictions with a couple of exceptions. So let's, so I'll show you these five teams now. We've got Fremantle, then Western Bulldogs, Adelaide Crows, Essendon, and the Gold Coast Suns. So let's try and dissect why I've got them in this order. On the bottom tier, I've got the Gold Coast Suns. Okay, so this might be a little bit controversial, a little bit harsh on them because, again, we're not just factoring in how well they've played so far this season. I'm factoring in, you know, how well they were placed going into this season, how convincing were they at the end of last year, and they were pretty horrible towards the end of last year, and in particular were pretty awful against... North Melbourne in that final round. So yes, they've beaten Richmond. That was good performance. They beat the Crows, albeit I think the Crows kind of played quite poorly. And then I think got a really harsh reality check against the Western Bulldogs. So that's my justification for having them lower than Adelaide, for instance. They beat Adelaide by a goal, sure. But I think Adelaide were clearly a much better team last year, and I'm not willing to flip-flop that easily. Again, it, it does seem harsh, and uh, you know I've still got them improved on last year, but I'm unsure about that. The same thing here with Essendon. Now, Essendon, I don't know if this is harsh or even generous. Like, should they be higher than the Gold Coast Suns? Well, I think last year they were clearly better. And this year, I actually think Essendon's played well. So yeah, there you go. That's why I think Essendon should be higher. Um, but 13th does feel harsh because I think they've played all right. So they beat Hawthorne by four goals. And uh, then they lost to Sydney in what I described as a pretty good competitive game against a really good team on their home deck. I don't think they've, you know, disgraced themselves by any stretch. I think they can be relatively content with the performances so far and some performances from young guys in particular as well. But they finished the year so poorly last year that they don't come into this with a flattering starting position. So, so far, par for the course, they've been decent. But the way they ended last year means they've still got to do more to to rise up these rankings. Then there's the Adelaide Crows. And again, Adelaide haven't looked good. Essendon's probably played better than Adelaide to start this year. But Adelaide were, you know, by the end of last year, a much better team. So again, I'm trying to respect that as well, rather than just completely throw it out. They lost to the Suns. I don't think they were good until the last quarter. And the Cats, again, it's hard to quantify how good Geelong will be this year. That is a tough opponent. But nonetheless, they probably haven't shown the improvement and the, made the start to the year that we expected, so they can't be featured too highly in these rankings. And justifiably, I think they're below the Western Bulldogs. So for context as well, they did finish below the Western Bulldogs on the ladder last year. I do realize, you know, controversial decision aside, but I think the Dogs have been better this year. Yes, they got rolled by Melbourne in the first round, but Melbourne seemed to have, you know, started this year with reasonable degree of form for sure. Uh, and then they were way too good for the Gold Coast Suns. And that's a team that Adelaide lost to. So that's my justification for them, but a little bit hard to place. And then I've got Fremantle really shooting up these rankings uh, with two wins over the Brisbane Lions and North Melbourne. I think they've made up a lot of ground, but, you know, I think it's still too early to put them anywhere higher than this. It's a tricky one again, like, has Fremantle been better than Collingwood? Yes, they have been a lot better than Collingwood to start this year. And if they were playing this week in Perth, I would be tipping Fremantle. But I don't want to throw out last year's performance entirely, and we are talking about a team who finished fifth last. So I think shooting up from 14th on the ladder to being ranked 10th on the power rankings and making up sizable ground, I think that is respectful to what they've done. And, you know, who knows where they go from here. Now, the next group of teams is tough to group, okay? Um, I've got the Brisbane Lions in 6th, St Kilda in 7th, Collingwood in 8th, and Geelong in ninth. Now, again, I have no idea where to place Collingwood, but let's start with Geelong. So they've had two pretty good wins to start the year. A win at GMHBA against St Kilda and a good win in Adelaide against the Crows. And again, I think they're making up ground, but I think the reason they're probably at the bottom of this group is because they started this season without that same level of backing because last year wasn't a great year. Yes, there were injuries. So you could make the case Geelong could be higher, but at the moment on the available data, I'm unwilling to put them too much higher. The three teams above them in this group here all finished significantly higher last year. So therefore, it's going to take a little bit longer for Geelong to fully leapfrog those. And then we got Collingwood. Again, So where the hell do you put Collingwood? The best team in the competition last year started the season really poorly. Not like West Coast bad, obviously, but you know, it's not just that they've lost narrowly these games. Like there's genuine question marks on the way they're playing their football. So I want to be respectful of the fact that they won the premiership and we shouldn't see them drop down the rankings too rapidly 
because of a bad start to the year because they could pull themselves out of this hole. But at the same time, I couldn't justify having them, you know, above St. Kilda, Brisbane, and all the other teams in the top five, which I'll get to. Then there's the Saints. The Saints just beat Collingwood. Fair enough. They did lose to Geelong. This is where it gets iffy. Like, you could make the case that oh, maybe Geelong are better. Uh, you know, I kind of think maybe if that wasn't at Jim HBA, I probably would have backed St. Kilda in to win that game. It was pretty close in the end. Also factoring in, St. Kilda, you know, made a home final. They did lose it, but starting from a higher position, solid start to the year. I like what I've seen from the Saints. To be higher, they probably need to start beating the teams that I've got higher in these rankings. Then there's the Brisbane Lions in six. Now, you can make your own mind up as to whether this is generous. I, I would put them, you know, comfortably higher than Collingwood uh, in terms of their performances. So uh, the thing is, with the Carlton loss... They did get eight goals in front. I think I think it was 46 points the margin. And I did criticize their performance in the second half, for sure. But at least it was against a really good team. It was only a one-point loss in the end. And they did have a blistering first half. Same thing in Perth against Fremantle. We still don't really know what to make of Fremantle yet. And Brisbane did have a good start, ultimately beaten on the day. They haven't looked great, but also considering the lofty position from which they started this season, certainly in terms of rankings, you know, uh, you know, one of the premiership favorites for sure. I haven't seen enough to see them drop too hard. So hopefully, so far, I haven't lost you. Let me know in the comments if I have. Now, let's move up to my top five. Um, now, again, I think we're splitting hairs between some of these teams, but let's start from the top this time. I think the number one team for me is GWS, and then Sydney, and then Carlton, Port Adelaide, and the Ds. Now, it's hard to, to split between GWS and Sydney. Why did I go for GWS? Well, I think probably the main difference is, is because they ended the, the season last year as one of the form sides of the competition, nearly knocked Collingwood out in that prelim. And I think you have to be respectful of that. Has Sydney beaten tougher opponents? Arguably. So both teams have beaten Collingwood. Uh, then Sydney's also beaten the Demons and the Dons, whereas GWS's other wins have been North and West Coast. Now, you could make the case that Sydney's shown more this year. On the other hand, you can only beat the teams that you've got in front of you. And GWS probably started the year, you know, ranked higher had I done a preseason one, which I didn't. But, you know, I, I would have thought they would start from a higher position. So splitting heads between those two, I think that they're clearly the best two teams so far. Carlton, just behind them, the basis of that, you know, great win at the Gabba against the Brisbane Lions. Won't take too much away from them. You know, got seriously challenged by Richmond. I thought they you know, Richmond played well, held their own nicely, um, and they all another team that's coming off a prelim. So probably just maybe shown a little bit less than Sydney, but you're probably splitting hairs there. The way Sydney have played as well has been really compelling. So let me know if you disagree with that top three. And then you've got the power and the Ds. I think both of these guys are going solid. Both of these sides were straight sets exits last year. The power have had a fairly easy start to the year, you know, a big win over West Coast, and then Richmond at the G, we still don't know how easy that is. It's hard to quantify that, and I think that is a good win. But in terms of ranking, you know, both of these teams didn't finish high last year and probably won't finish high this year, in my personal opinion. And then the Ds, you know, got beaten by the Swans. No shame in that. Then beat up on the Dogs. That's a pretty good win, in my opinion. Beat up on the Hawks. We're still getting a read on Hawthorne, but they don't look too strong this year. So why do I have Port Adelaide over Melbourne? Uh, honestly, the only like tiebreaker there was the fact that Port Adelaide finished higher last year. But that's razor thin, and we're still learning about this team. So that's kind of my rankings there. Again, if I had to sort of preempt some criticism, like, I, again, I think Geelong fans will probably want to be higher. They'll probably say, you know, injuries last year. Again, it's just really hard to quantify. And uh, regardless, they weren't playing well. They still they still have to earn that ranking back. I'm not uh, saying, you know, they're going to finish ninth. I'm just saying that is the rankings on available data. Fremantle's a tough one. I think they're on the ascent. Um, that being said, you know, famously inconsistent. Is this the year they get more consistent? Maybe. Maybe it is. The Bulldogs could also move up. I think they would look really good against the Gold Coast Suns. That was a big statement win. Adelaide as well, um, you know, I'm not writing off. I'm just saying, you know, not a great start to the year. And, um, you know, they've dropped a couple of spots, but they can move their way up. Essendon, I have no real strong feeling as to whether they should be higher or lower. Gold Coast as well, still getting a read. And there is a li little bit of a lack of trust with those couple of clubs there too. So one other way to do this, like, I don't know if this is super helpful, but I'm going to have a look and see if, if this ranking is consistent with my tips does it inform my tips is there inconsistencies there i've done my 40 tips yesterday on the channel which you can go check more in more detail but brisbane to beat collingwood yeah i've got brisbane slightly higher than collingwood carlton should beat north uh, i'm going to tip Fremantle over adelaide um, so that is consistent with my ranking st kilda should beat essendon consistent with my ranking 
Port Adelaide and D's. Yeah, how funny is that? I talked about how even those guys are. Um, Port Adelaide, I probably tip because it's its home. But again, I don't feel super strongly about that. Sydney should beat the Tigers at the MCG. Um, West Coast should beat the Bulldogs, right? Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. Well, that one's obvious. And Geelong should beat Hawthorne. So I think that that at least is one way of validating this. It's it's tough to do this off the top of the head. I, I did try my best, but let me know what you guys think. As always, make sure you check out BetterHelp if you are interested in starting therapy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.